Thank you, everyone, for attending the uh, CDTA Board of Directors meeting for February 28th. I'll call the meeting to order. First item of business is the approval of the minutes of the last board meeting on January 21st. Hopefully, we'll have a chance to review it. Uh, can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Okay. Second, Mike. Any uh, in confidence? Sure. Confidence. Any, uh, changes, additions, subtractions, uh, here and none, I'm going to approve. Um, we'll go into recognitions. Yes. One. One recognition today. Mr. Bryant. All right. Octavia Bryant, who was so excited about being here today, I walked in about 20 after 11, Octavia said, what are you doing? I'm just ready to go. She told me to go. <laughs> hey, you, you, you could be a manager. <laughs> All yours, Shane. Thank you. Um, so Octavia Bryant is celebrating 25 years of service, and he's an Albany operator. Um, before coming to CDTA, Octavia was a bank teller for five years with State Bank, which has changed names a few times and actually is now known as Bank of America. So Octavia came to CDTA by word of mouth from friends who worked here, and he decided to make the switch in February of 1999. So for a few short months, he drove part-time star, as many of the operators who entered into CDTA did at that time, um, before moving over to Fixture Operations in Schenectady. He drove the Route 55, which today is a combination of routes, and most importantly, the 905 BRT. So after a year or so, he transferred to Albany and settled in on several routes, the 1, the 13, the 18, the 125, and the 100. And he drove all over Albany and said he loved it since it's where he was the most familiar. And today he drives the Route 10 Western Avenue and the Route 13 on New Scotland Avenue. Octavia's favorite part of the job, he says, is genuinely getting customers to where they need to go safely. When customers get off the bus and say thank you to Octavia, he says that he knows that he's done a good job and done his best for the day. So many things have changed over the years at CDTA, and Octavia noted there uh, currently are no springs sticking out of the bus seats, which is the biggest improvement that he's seen over the years. The back of the day, it was a real issue from what he tells us. Um, he also says he prefers the newer series Gillens, which have small, smaller steering wheels. Octavia has stayed with CDTA for more than two decades because he wanted to climb the career and seniority ladder and not start over somewhere else. He says the benefits and the pay that CDTA offers have created a great work-life balance for him. Biking keeps Octavia busy in his free time. He says he loves to bike from Albany to Schenectady along Central Avenue. He said he rode his bike to Schenectady when his car was down and out for a little while. And he says he also finds calm in his day-to-day -day by reading the Bible and reflecting on history. So retirement is about, about two years and 10 months. <laughs> 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 and he says he is looking forward to it, but until then, he said he'll keep showing up and showing everyone his great CDTA smile. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we don't have anything else. <laughs> Max may have something. <laughs> yeah, he may have that. I think there's an envelope that goes with that. It's right taped right to the back. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Oh, yes. Congratulations. Octavia is one of those uh, employees that honestly. I don't think I've seen his name on anything other than an awards list, maybe ever. Um, you know, just really, we have this core group of people that keep this place running. He's one of them. I mean, just you know, comes to work every single day, does whatever he's asked to do. Um, I mean, it's pretty close to perfect. If, we, you know, if they were all like that, they wouldn't need managers, I guess. But, um, you know, really, I'm just top, top, as you can tell, just a top-notch person. Right. 
Which I didn't know about the two years. <laughs> Ten months. Ten months. Yeah. Yeah. 67. Yeah. 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 Those are big holes when we lose people like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's like two people. Anyway, he's great. All right, we'll move on uh, on our abbreviated agenda today to committee reports, and I'll start with the <clears throat> Foreign Operations Committee that uh, convened on February 14th. Uh, we reviewed the agendas for all the February committee and, and the board meeting, and as you can see from the board agenda, uh, it's been a quiet month. Um, Carm and Lisa Morello have had their regular advocacy meetings with legislators, key stakeholders. This is continuing, and in a few weeks, one house bill will be issued, giving us a better idea of where we stand with state operating assistance. And as part of our advocacy efforts, we'll be telling our story at the state of CDTA, held here on Tuesday, March 5th. I hope everyone will try to attend this annual event. Uh, during our committee meeting, it was also agreed uh, that the Ad Hoc West Facility Oversight Committee will be hosted by strategic and operational planning for the time being. Uh, staff has been continuing their work, studying options for a new facility and property, and you'll be hearing more about this in a little bit. Next meeting of the Board Operations Committee is Wednesday, March 13th at 9.15 a.m. here at 110 Waterbury Avenue. Any questions on that? Quick report. Uh, next up is the Performance Monitoring Audit Committee, Peter Wall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we, the committee met at noon on February 21st, and um, Sarah Matros provided a quarterly report, which I believe is in your packets. The report included a prevailing wage audit and attendance and bonus review. Uh, Sarah's annual independence and objectivity statement was also reviewed, and a written summary was provided. Amanda Avery provided a quarterly review on the adequacy of the risk management workers comp self-insurance account. The committee determined that both accounts were adequate at this time. Mike Collins gave the monthly management report for January. MRT was 1.5% under budget this month, 5.5% for the year. Customer revenue is 12% over budget for the year. Rail station is 15% over budget for the year. Wages were 9% over budget in January because of more work days and two holidays. Year-to-date wages are 5% under budget. Parts were 20% over budget this month due to unexpected repairs to major engine components. But overall, we remain in a good financial position. And Chris Desney gave a non-financial report for December. Fixed route ridership is up 21% this month. Star ridership is up 6.5% for the month. On-time performance is at 73%. Star on-time performance was at 76%. We missed 0.21% of all scheduled trips, and preventable accidents were at 30, and non-preventable were at 21. We then went into executive session to discuss pending lit litigation. No action was taken. And our next meeting is going to be is scheduled for March 20th. Yeah. Any questions? Thank you, Peter. Uh, next committee report by Dave Stackrow, Community Stakeholder Relations. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Community and Stakeholder Relations Committee met on February 22nd, uh, both here at 110 Waterbleed Ave and via Microsoft Teams. Staff provided a report on the 2024 marketing plan and the monthly earned media and community engagement report. John Scherzer reviewed our marketing plan for 2024. The plan looks to increase ridership, enhance the CDTA brand and workforce development. Messaging will focus on telling the CDTA story what we do, who we serve, and why we matter. We will talk about the ways that CDTA connects people to what matters and how our brand is woven into the lives of the people who live and work in the capital region. Jamie Caslow provided the Earned Media and Community Relations Report. Over the last month, we earned 15 media placements in television, newspaper, and radio with an estimated value of $20,000. Stories focused on CDTA's ridership rebound, our new on-demand service Flex Plus, and expansion of service into Warren County. We participated in several local events, including transportation for the Dr. Martin Luther King March in Albany, the Future Cities competition, a visit from UAlbany International Students, and the American Heart Association Food Drive. Jamie outlined social media engagement for the month, we saw a steady hold on followers across social media channels, 
Top posts included the Red Line BRT and Warren County Service. Looking ahead, we will hold our State of CDTA event on Tuesday, March 5th, and we will celebrate Transit Worker Appreciation Day on March 18th. Next meeting of the committee will be on Thursday, March 21st at 11.15 a.m. via Microsoft Teams and here at 110 Waterfleet Ave. And that concludes my report. All right. Thank you, Dave. Any questions? Issues? Mike Rochelle, Strategic and Operational Planning Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Strategic and Operational Planning Committee met uh, February 22nd noon here at 110 Water, Water Valley Ave and via Microsoft Teams. We had two administrative discussion items, the first being the fiscal year 2025 budget update. Mike Collins provided an update on where we are with development and uh, next year's budget. In December, we submitted a preliminary budget to the state based on a 7% increase in state operating assistance. Since then, the governor's executive budget proposed an 8% increase. With the addition of Warren County, we are projecting a $1 million increase to MRT. We will increase customer fares by $1 million, are forecasting an additional 400,000 in revenue at the Joe Bruno Rail Station and are reducing the federal assistance line by $1 million, allowing us to reduce the reliance on prior COVID funds. We have adjusted the wage line to reflect the addition of the Glens Falls operation, a full year of the purple line and wage increases as called for in our collective bargaining agreement. The professional services line shows a 14% increase for IT security and telecommunication, ambassadors and operational expenses for drive. The maintenance service line is projected to increase by 13% based on facility needs, including Glens Falls. Manpower issues continue to drive increases in purchase transportation. We are projecting a 6% increase but are in the middle of redesigning some service opportunities. The parts line will increase by 12% as well. We have a balanced budget that requires a few more tweaks. In March, we will bring the final draft to the committee for review and approval. Our second item was the West facility update. Uh, Jeremy Smith provided an update on where we are with the development of a West facility. We reviewed the various studies we conducted over the last few years, several of which pointed to a need to construct a new facility. The challenges that feed into this idea increase are, include an increase in ridership, recruiting and retention, expanding partnerships, expansion into new counties, and the basic need for more space. We have developed a program evaluation to identify the high level requirements for a new location this included a service plan, program support needs, and sustainability options. And our an alternatives analysis looked at seven options, four of which pointed to a new West location. We are looking at the existing Schenectady site as an option for replacement and expansion as well. Going forward, we will narrow down site selections, complete and submit a grant for design work, complete an RFP for design and coordinate with additional stakeholders and to discuss financing and staffing plans. The next meeting of the committee will be March 21st here at 12 p.m. Uh, 12 PM at 110 Waterville Dev and via Microsoft Teams. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mike. Anybody have any questions about that? We have so much time. Why don't you read that budget? <laughs> <laughs> Can't get enough of that. Uh, then we'll move on to uh, Carmen's report. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. I'm glad that we have a lot of time. I'll, I'll keep it brief. Um, you know, I, I, I spend a day or so after the committee meetings sort of digesting and, okay, what, what are we going to do with the CEO report? What's, what's the theme? <coughs> you know, sometimes I'm wondering, you know, is it really this good? You know, because there are just superlative after superlative, and it was all mentioned in the committee report. So, you know, you try to find something new or something different. And honestly, I'm just kind of running out of things. Um, so this month, I picked bus rapid transit. And 
Uh, last week, uh, I was with a reporter from the Business Review who's doing a story on Central Avenue. And I'm not 100% sure it's going to be a good story because Central Avenue in Albany has experienced some difficult times. But he wanted to talk about the success of, of BRT. So I got to thinking after I talked to him that what started out almost 20 years ago, really that's how far back you have to go to sort of actually more than 20 years ago, the seat of bus rapid transit was a bold move to transform the Route 5 corridor that Octavia Bryant used to drive on uh, between Schenectady and Albany. And that has grown to this network now of services, infrastructure development, and partnership building. And it's really what has happened to us now. Um, almost 60% of our ridership when you include now uh, the purple line, is BRT corridor based. So if you look at those three corridors and all the routes, not just the BRT, but all the routes that are on those corridors, more than half of our ridership occurs there. Um, I don't know this, I should have looked this up, but I'm gonna guess that more than half of our universal access partners are also there. And it's gotten to the point, you know, what comes first, universal access or, or route development? I think they I think they work hand in hand. There, there, there is one one thing that, that kind of supersedes the other, but you talk about game changers in the last 20 years, there have been a number of them. BRT is either at the top or, or pretty close to the top. And you know, um, for veteran board members who were here 20 years ago, and there are only two of them, you know, honestly, we did not know how we were gonna pay for it. We literally cob job the funding for it together. And I know that the existing staff looks at the work we do with budget development for the new BRTs and says, boy, it's really difficult. Honestly, it was nothing compared to the Route 5. We didn't have enough money. Um, the first service plan was rejected because we didn't have the money to operate such rich service. Well, that rich service is now another calling card. Because what the BRTs taught us is that if you build it, they will come. You have to build the really high-level service. And that's what we've done. It's you know, really high frequency, operates seven days a week, <clears throat> um, you know, starts early, early, like 5 o'clock in the morning. And we argue about this a lot. Is it too early? Uh, and it runs until you know, really late, you know, past the time when I used to tell my kids, you shouldn't be out because nothing good happens. You know, after midnight, but we're out there, right? So, you know, we're in the middle of that. And Jack Grogan and Rich Nassau and a lot of others know what happens, even on buses uh, after midnight. But it, it really has been a game changer. It is definitely, along with universal access, fueling this incredible ridership boost. I, I talk to people from around the state a lot. And, and why is it happening in Albany and not? And not not in Rochester, not in Buffalo. I, I point to service design. Um, if you look, and I do this a lot, I go on their websites and look at their schedules. <clears throat> it's different than what we're doing. You know, these are larger city schedules than, than, than this is not a mid, this doesn't happen in mid sized cities. In mid sized cities, you know, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, pretty good. Here on trunk routes, certainly on BRTs, unacceptable. So th I think that's what's what's changed things for us, and they really are probably half of what I, I put in this, this month's um, uh, CEO report. It's really been a game changer, and it's really gotten us to the point where the budget plan is, you know, I walked into Trisha's office two days ago, and I said, this is the earliest we've ever been close to a balanced budget. What are you going to do for the rest of the month? And she, you know, she laughed. She said, "Trust me, there's plenty. There is plenty of work to be done still, you know, putting the final pieces together." But you know, and it's really what's led to the advocacy work that we do. And and you know, Lisa Morello has been, you know, for me, a, a professional game changer. You know, yes, we will, we will follow the NIPTA lead and we'll get behind whatever you know NIP, the number NIPTA is asking for but we're gonna tell your story, your meaning CDTA. And that's where we, and she's taught me not to be bashful about you know, telling people that we are different, that we do things differently, and we should be getting more money. Translation, you know, the new county expansions have resulted in a lot more operating assistance than we ever would have gotten if we didn't have them. And frankly, it pays for those operations. 
um, you know, frankly, the only thing holding us back, the only thing holding us back, and you all are experiencing it, it's a difficulty in attracting and retaining people. Um, but, you know, we have every year, we have plans and new ideas and new ways. Uh, we took what the board um, clearly <coughs> indicated at the, the retreat and took it to heart. Um, Kelly's staff will be increased by two. We've split the pipeline development. You know, we've always had someone doing, you know, pipeline training, move along opportunities for the, the blue collar workforce, but we're now going to hire someone who's specifically charged with the professional staff. So when people transition, and we had a long discussion about this at the retreat, transition from, you know, a supervisor, a road supervisor into an assistant superintendent, what is the track? What is the educational plan for that individual? Not just those, those people, but everyone will get that kind of attention. So we're still in the search search process, and even those jobs are really difficult to find. Uh, you know, Chris Desney will tell you how hard it is to find help in the IT area. I mean, I met a new person who's, I, I think the job was open for a year. I don't know how many people were paraded in here, you know, for whatever reason, it wasn't a, it wasn't a fit. But, but like all of you, we, you know, we, just, we keep him. The person we have <coughs> seems like a really good hire, seems like he's coming here for the right reason, seems like, you know, but, but you just don't know. But, um, we're really on a solid path. Uh, we'll talk about this uh, at state of state of CDTA. Um, we're the only ones doing that. I mean, I find that hard to believe. You know, they do legislative days. <clears throat> they invite people in, and there'll be very little talk, if any, any talk about funding right? at the state of CDTA. Yeah, we don't. No. We don't really talk about that. We just assume that everybody knows that you know we should we should we should get more. But I believe you get more if you if you earn more. You shouldn't be given more just because, you know, you just because you say you need more. I think we can demonstrate, you know, result after result after result after result. <laughs> um, you know, remind you. I hope you're all registered. You know, this will also be on full display at the chamber dinner. I know it's you know not everybody's favorite. You know, it's a thousand people. It's a lot of people. But I, I have confirmed that we are the first or the only um, public sector entity. <coughs> To ever receive the change maker award, you know, I think it's because of all the things that you know, we talk about here. Um, so it's it's good. Uh, I tried to find a little, you know, maybe not so good twist. You know, there's plenty of stuff, but um, it's, it's sort of the day to day stuff that we all know about. Um, there's nothing outstanding, but it's it's you know BRT. You know, for this month is the focus point. You know, Emily Devito sends a a press release out, you know, with a theme from the board meeting every month. So there will be follow-up on BRT. Um, again, I don't know what the business review article is going to say. I don't think it's going to be kind to Central Avenue, but I think it will be kind to us. That's your report? Yeah. I, 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 I other things if you want. No, I thought awesome. we agreed we were going to take an action. <laughs> Jamie said, there's no actions. What should we do? He said, how do we fire somebody? Well, if you fire somebody, you've got to go in three. So that's <laughs> one I, I think um, you mentioned the philosophy, if you, they build it, if you build it, they will come. And I'm sure Jamie can relate to uh, the public funds for economic development. We, are, we were not allowed to take that approach. It was the demand needed to be there, and we needed to have commitments before we would do. We, and for most of funding that goes towards those things, so to be bold and to take those steps and to have the flexibility to do so and to mitigate risk along the way. Yeah. With respect, because uh, uh, there's risk. There's a ton of risk associated with it. You know, 20 years ago, I, I, and Dave and Denise, you know, chime in here. I, I don't know if we were bold or I don't, I don't know what we, we we it was a good idea, but it was just not it was not flushed out. It, it was just it, it it was the right thing. We kind of stumbled it. It's kind of like building a train station without enough money. Right? We we were good at that. <laughs> well, again, that's another project. You know, we remember well several of us. I mean, we didn't know where the next dollar was coming from. Yet we were. Advancing the construction of a, of the facility. I mean, literally, we didn't know if we could pay the contractors. If we weren't that in that type of situation at BRT, we're pretty close. 
But when I remember we rejected the first service plan, it was like way too rich. And some of you remember Christina Younger, she was our director of planning and she you know, had a conniption uh, because she just went, you know, and here I am, I, I, I was new, not to CD Day, but to the job and I said, we can't do it. And the, the savior at that time was a, a fellow by the name of Dave Palmer. He was one of our transportation superintendents. I said, Dave, you're gonna run this project. You're gonna figure out how to, this is her service plan. This is where I think we are. You know, find us and you know, meet us in the middle. And he did, he did, he got it done. And we've built that now into, I mean, there are times of the day when you know, there are buses like every seven or eight minutes. It's, it's just phenomenal. The purple line, you know, it's been a little slow going getting it built, but I, I mean, visually and brand wise, it's, 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 it's unbelievable to watch those all articulated buses, you know, no matter where you kind of are along the board when they pass by you. Something to be said about brand awareness too. And it is great to look back and see the success. I mean, uh, it was one of the more challenging times for the board because, you know, you think about how many years we had gotten to the point of doing the infrastructure part of the red line. And then when it came to pulling the trigger to actually operate service, the board was actually considering whether or not right. to do it. So we had all this money invested. We had bought buses. I mean, you know, the, the infrastructure was <clears throat> there and ready to go. And there was a real concern about whether we could afford to pay for, for the operation. Right. right. The capital was done, but uh, the operating part was, was a struggle. And certainly the, the two that came after that, um, you know, went much more smoothly because it wasn't new. Um, partly it wasn't new. We still needed to find the money, but we had something to build on. So great success. I, I hope, um, I, I agree 100% with if you build it, they will come. I hope the next piece, you know, specifically to Central Avenue and other places where development is really depressed, that our service, the frequency, the operation, I hope that that leads to opportunities to develop, whether it's housing, low income housing, commercial and residential mixed housing. Um, we haven't seen that in that corridor. And that's one of the things that transit is successful for is that with good public transit service, oftentimes development follows. And we've seen it in other areas. Yep. Um, specifically, you know, Projects have been built, but that corridor has really struggled. Um, so I, I hope. Yeah, and it's going through a changing. It's changing, right? <clears throat> I'm not a planner anymore. You hope. Our infrastructure is certainly there. Yeah. You know, to support whatever. Um, but you know, the history, when you start coming back to that BRT thing, that was another example in my mind of board staff communication, cooperation. We basically, I remember at one meeting, we looked at every, we all looked at each other and said, blank, we have to do this, you know, as HIT, we have to do this. I mean, how could you build the corridor? And so what that led to is this, the following two projects with the following two grants, both contained money for uh, operations. And, you know, hats off to the staff for getting that done. That's the real game changer, both the blue line and the purple line, we had several million dollars for each project to get us going, get us off our feet, you know, let us operate that first year or two. You know, it's, it's subsidized. Um, there's still, you know, the new issue is still manpower. It's or people power. And that's not going to, I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon. It looks like we've turned a little bit of a corner, but every time I think we're turning a corner, something else happens. It's just, it's just, it's different place. But um, you know, I should have mentioned the rail station too. Rail, sta right, rail station was almost comical. Uh, the fact that we, I mean, we built it with. I mean, we were knocking stuff down. And we didn't own it. <laughs> I mean, that would never happen. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I mean, we could, we should probably write a book. I had breakfast this morning with the former chair, uh, Tony Esposito, who was. Before Dave, the chair before Dave. God love him. He's still, um, he's 84 and he's still, he's still spunky. And um, it was a risk taker for sure. You have to be a little bit of a risk taker. Sometimes the risks weren't 
this calculated maybe is, but it got done, right? So at the end of the day, no one cares. But yeah, that I could, we could keep talking about something else if you want, but <laughs> <laughs> at least on BRT, I'm out of steam. Well, like Carm, I, I also think about our committee meetings afterwards and kind of put things together, but Mine's usually on a Thursday at 2.30 with scotch. At 2.30! A cigar. A cigar. A cigar. Yeah. I love it. I um, aspire to be But I did uh, drop a karma note last week saying that um, you know, it, it almost seems like CDTA is going through a, a kind of a golden age right now. And, and uh, I know at Metroplex, we went through a similar period for several years where just the level of cooperation, the amount of money coming through, the you know, stakeholders, the banks, the people you work with, developers to get things done, it did pass. And it's not like that any, anymore. And that was kind of what I iterated to, to Carm was, you know, these are really, really good times. And if you wanted to dig into find problems, we can certainly find yeah. problems all over the place. But but it is good to sort of go through those periods, but you know that kind of what goes up comes down eventually, and, and we'll all be ready for that, <coughs> when, that uh, when that time comes. So you should know that uh, one of the things that <coughs> nudged his note we received, we received uh, word that we're a finalist Business Review does something uh, for the top three, I think it's public works projects for um, the, the Gateway Mobility Hub. Um, I think that's really the partner. You know, it's not a big project, but it's a partnership. You know, got rid of an eyesore, turned it into something. So I sent that over to Jamie. It's, you know, he, you know, frankly, without he and Ray Gillen, I, don't, I know that that project doesn't happen the way it happened. You know, again, a partnership. They bought the building, they knocked it down, uh, cleared away from us, but uh, that's when he said, you know, everything that goes up must come down. <laughs> He's right, and what we, you know, what we need to do in our budget planning process is prepare for that. What will the organization look like three years from now? And, and we're here, and we're, you know, for right now projected to be here. You know, how do we kind of balance that out a little bit? No cliff. Let's make it a hill. <laughs> Anybody else have any comments for the go to the order here? I have something. So you, you shared an example of you know this position you were trying to fill for almost a year and like the complexities of some of the positions that you have here are very technical, right? Yep. You need certain qualifications and skills, and it's really hard to find that. You either have to pull them from the organization, which is tough to do, or you know, ideally you'd hire them. In school and and train them right, and it's not always mm -hmm. um, possible. Has there been any you know, further communication, especially as it relates to say IT services, about partnering with a local college university to have the track that offers that type of skills? I know we've done it before. So our featured speaker um, at State of CDTA is Roger Rand Sammy from Hudson Valley. We are working not on the IT position specifically. We, we are working with Hudson Valley to develop um, a pipeline for um, technicians, mechanics. That job has totally changed. In fact, we're, we have a future <coughs> video. Fam, you know, Rich Nassau, his dad, but his the third Nassau is a highly skilled young technician who has an associate's degree in automotive technology. We need to go that route. Um, IT, that's a little hard. It's almost like, you, you, you know, Chris is looking for you know, someone who I don't know, speaks Hastis and trapeze. I mean, these are, you know, so we found somebody. And the <coughs> interesting thing was, I, I met him the other day. You know, why CDTA? He didn't skip a beat. He said, nah, I'm sick of working at home. I, I can't take it. I, I need to come to one. So that's, that's, cool. what, that's one where our, our work environment actually helped us. There have been times we've lost people who are remote, want to be remote, or aren't remote, but want to be remote, and they know that they have us, so to speak. So, yeah, I don't know, Kelly, any, anything else? It's, it's tough. Everyone's different. It, it, is, it is tough, and people, you know, you have so many conflicting priorities, and, you know, with the remote work, and with... I, the one thing with the IT positions I think that we've wrestled with is, you know, we're 
or maybe come to terms with is we are not going to find someone that has experience with the systems that we use here unless we go to another transit property, which isn't likely. So we need to look for someone that has good general IT skills and good analytical skills and project management skills. If we can find that, we can teach them the intricacies of the technology. But for a while, we were looking for everything, you know, and finally, Chris and Thomas were just like, we're not finding these people. We need to look for core, core skills. Um, so I think that served us better. Do you, do you manage your own hardware and software here? Or is that, you, you, have you ever explored the manager service option there? I mean, it, it yeah. lessens your control a little bit. It's over a double-edged sword. Yeah. Yeah. And because so many of our systems are industry specific and niche, you know, there's generic things like BCP and DR and, 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 and all that kind of stuff. But so many of our systems are niche. Um, we're better off doing it ourselves. Um, you know, the other thing, you know, the little quiet thing is, you know, there's the New York State ITS, right? That big umbrella, which technically we're, we, we don't do a whole lot with them. We can, we handle all our own stuff. Um, pieces are outsourced and we manage those contracts directly with some of the pieces that are outsourced. But I think I can speak certainly for Thomas and the other directors that managing it internally is a very uh, good thing. You know, a sense of ownership, a sense of direct control, access, um, it's a good thing. But we get support. We have, you know, we have vendor contracts, as you all know. Uh, we have some um, uh, personnel contracts uh, in our help desk and our engineering area. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a, 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 you know, combination. But you know, it's all us managing it. And you know, it's interesting when you're managing contractors. Um, and one of the best pieces of advice I've got five years as a woman next to me whispered in my ear I remember it like it was yesterday her opinion was you know we don't do a great job in pushing contractors you know, managing and pushing them to you know what's I think I think you're right and that's why I like the West facility we're gonna need some help you, know, you can't expect people you can't expect Jeremy to manage what he manages and then also manage, pick a $75 million construction project. It'll report through him, but you, you just can't expect that if you want people to push. But you have to push with contractors. You get what you pay for. Or, and if you let them, they'll, they'll, they'll take all your money. Less than you pay for. <laughs> you get less than you pay for. So okay. it's, it's uh, you know, two totally different examples, but it's, it's interesting. But I, I don't think... Because we're small, but I don't think we do as good of a job there as we could. Great hole in the, that comes from the, from the parking lot project. You know, the water main. And, oh, God. All we're trying to do is build a parking lot. Even that you know, ended up being difficult. But we persevered. Anything else? Uh, the next meeting of the board is... April, April, March, 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 here probably until after the event, the, the change oh, right. event. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. This is your it's award. That's phenomenal. Award, yeah. We'll do something to get everybody tied into it. That's awesome. Right, Jen? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Peter, thank you. Second. Jordan, thank you. Thank you, Travis, for coming. <laughs> Appreciate the good discussions. Yes. Have a good day. You didn't even get